Hey, IFBB Pro, Johnny O. Jackson here. You're now watching The Hardcore Truth with Johnny O. Jackson. Welcome in, everybody, to this week's episode. This week, I want to talk about a hot topic that's out there right now, and that's the tragic passing of the pro bodybuilders uh, from last year on into this year. It seemed like a non-ending topic. It seemed like every few months, we're talking about you know a tragic passing of a bodybuilder. But I want to do a little twist on it. I don't want to name names. I mean, it's a horrible tragedy. And, and it's already hard for the family. So I don't want to reiterate, you know, what every other, you know, Instagram post and podcast has talked about um, already. Um, what I want to do is talk about my near-death experience with competing in the pro level. So one thing I have to say is... Um, we have to start being smarter than the things that we pick up and decide to put in our mouth or the things we decide to inject in our bodies. We need to really start being smarter. Um, and saying that, I can't say I was in the beginning of my career, you know, um, or in the beginning of myself taking drug enhancements. Um, so it took me a while, actually. And I actually had a conversation with my wife at the time. I had went as far as to win the junior nationals in 99. Um, and that's when I sat down with my wife at the time. I had two kids. She had one kid. So um, it was really important for me to have her support in it. And I thought, hey, I think I could turn pro at this point. You know, you know, it's been a lifelong dream for my for me to turn pro. So this is my opportunity. Um, she did support me in it and said she had my back. So I went ahead and, you know, took that step forward into it. And I have to say, you know, I got, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth hand information on the amount I should take, what I should take. Um, but you know, I had no idea. I just know I needed to start getting on these drug enhancements to enhance my body to look like everybody else is going to look uh, in the pro ranks if I'm going to be successful. And what an awful way to look at things. I, I should have took a step back. You know, right now I take care of myself in the way of doing lab work, you know, every four to six months and keeping up on, you know, my health. Um, you would have thought I would have did the same thing during my you know, competing years. And when I was, you know, heavy into uh, competing and taking, you know, drug enhancements, but I wasn't, you know, I was more interested in, you know, how much I should take and if I should take more of what I was taking, uh, if that would help me, you know, get a place or two better than what I was getting. That's the only thing that was important. And most of us athletes, you know, think that way, think, you know, what can we do to, be the best, you know, and if we can skip two or three places and doing that, then hell, you know, let's go. You know, I want to be successful. You know, I want to be the face of the business. Um, So you overlook, you know, the fact that, you know, am I healthy enough to take the things that I'm taking? Um, So in saying this, um, just really be smart about it. And um, like I said, I go to Frontline right now, TRT Clinic. Um, they're very helpful. Um, they've educated me, you know, um, to, to the you know length of me looking back at what I was doing and was like, that was just so stupid, you know. Um, they give me little tidbits like the fact that being an African-American, you know, a nanthate, you know, test testosterone and anthe is better for African Americans because it really doesn't um, um, it doesn't make your blood pressure go up so being a black person we are already acceptable of having high blood pressure and so you don't want to take anything that's going to enhance that so an anthe test testosterone and anthe is one of the testosterones for us that would help us not you know you know, get to that high blood pressure, that critical high blood pressure that we're acceptable to get to. Um, long term, I don't know, but it's just still simple little things like that that could have been useful in, you know, doing what I was doing. 
um, just being a little bit smarter. <clears throat> Not that taking anything is smart. You know, I always say, you know, taking steroids, it's, it's like being in high school and having a few high school fights and being successful and then getting out of high school and getting in the ring with Mike Tyson, not knowing who Mike Tyson is or was in his prime and think you had a chance against him and think you're going to survive. You know, that's what I think of a person who, and including myself back then, when I decided to take steroids and get, you know, like I said, second, third, fourth, tenth hand information on how much and how I should take it. All right, to move on to um, this experience I was talking about for myself, um, I was getting ready for a show in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, the last three weeks is the the most crucial time in the dieting um, period. Um, so uh, everything's in, you have to do everything almost perfect. You know, that last three weeks, you, you know, you can really screw up. You know, I usually go about 16 weeks dieting and I can screw up, you know, 13 weeks of, uh, you know, hard work in those three weeks of doing things the wrong way. Well, anyway, um, during it, that last three weeks, I was told to take a uh, potassium chloride, um, you know, with each meal. Um, and so I was like, okay, um, I didn't argue, um, thought that was a lot of potassium at the time, but I said, no problem. Um, I'm sure he's trying to build up a storage of potassium in my body. So, you know, during the latter time when I have to dehydrate, I don't have to worry about cramping so much because of the positive potassium in my system. Lo and behold, I didn't know that, um, I wasn't lacking potassium. So I really didn't need to take that potassium and potassium chloride seem to help you store potassium a little bit faster. Um, so I have all this potassium build up in my system. You know, I get down to the last week and start dehydrating myself. So I start dehydrating myself with all this potassium in my system is just start creating this, you know, perfect storm in my body to where, you know, things start shutting down and not operating right. Start having difficult, you know, with my stomach. Um, uh, as well as um, come to find out that my stomach has stopped producing uh, stomach acid to break down the food that I was eating so I can digest my food. So it wasn't absorbing anything. Everything just was sitting there pretty much in my stomach. You know, my food rotting, you know, potassium, everything else I was taking, my body wasn't absorbing. It was pretty much just laying in my stomach, uh, store, getting stored. Um, so, uh, you know, get to the de dehydration part. Like I said, the last, you know, three days, you really start pulling water out. Um, I still had some stomach trouble, but I was like, you know, you know, I have to do what I have to do and I just get over it and just, you know, get through it. Um, and so, um, you know, like I said, that perfect storm was, you know, getting created in my stomach and inside my body. Um, I made it to the show. I actually competed. Um, I, I don't even know how many tums I ate during the show. Try to settle my stomach um, so I can get through the posing. Got through it. Got back to my room. I'll start slamming Gatorades because I, I was totally dehydrated. I started cramping. Like everything negative. My stomach hurt so bad. Um, I thought I can rehydrate myself um, to settle things down, but you know, my stomach was just getting bigger and felt like it wanted to burst. So I start sticking my finger down my throat, you know, puking up a red Gatorade, um, tossing and turning. I know I fell asleep a couple times and I probably should have lost my life more and less uh, during those times. I totally remember, you know, waking up and just going back to like suffering with my stomach. Finally, after four or five hours of this, I walked downstairs to the front desk. The guy seen me. And automatically grabbed the phone and was like, do I need to call the paramedics? And I was like, no, do you have someone on site that I can see? And he was like, no, we don't have anyone here like this. And I was like, yeah, call the paramedics. I need some help. And uh, so he called. They rushed in, saw me, you know, put me on a gurney, you know, put some IVs in me as soon as they got me in a truck um, and got me to the hospital. Um, once I got to the hospital, I don't remember much. I, I think they put me out pretty quick. Um and then, you know, as I was coming to, I was laying in a dark room, 
you know, and you can hear the heart monitor beep, 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 you know, so, you know, I'm waking it up and, you know, I happen to see the doctor and his apprentice walking up on me really slow, kind of looking, you know, and um, I moved. And when I moved, he kind of jumped and uh, and uh, he was like, sir, he was like, um, I have to tell you. And this is the first things out of his mouth, not, you know, how you feeling or how he was like, sir. I have to tell you, I have no idea how you're alive right now. Your heart should have stopped hours ago. He said the level of potassium you you had in your system was critical. You know, normally a three is the highest, you know, is really detrimental. You you had a 7.5. Your potassium level was at a 7.5. Your heart should have stopped hours ago. So I have no idea how I'm talking to you right now. Um, So that was really um, awakening for me. Um, Really scary, to say the least. Um, So with saying this, and I came out of it. They flushed my system. Um, I came out of it, you know, got to go home. um, And, um, you know. Uh, I have to say, you know, being a bodybuilder, it, it's almost horrible to have short-term memory, but you have to have it because I moved on from there and I kept on competing after that. And I have to say, I I really didn't get any smarter, you know, after that event. You know, I still went ahead on not really getting labs done. I didn't do a follow-up with the you know hospital or the doctor after I got home. Um, I was really foolish in, uh, in my thinking and, you know, just move on is over with your home. You're on your two feet. You can work out, just move on. Um, so the mentality, you know, has to, you know, change for sure. Um, and that's why I want to reveal this little bit to you. Um, so you know that, you know, we, you know, matter what walk of life or what level, you're at, you know, we sometimes make dumb decisions. Um, you know, we don't want to be dumb decisions. We try to make the best decisions we can to win, but sometimes, you know, you have to take a step back and, you know, really, 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 uh, think about what you're doing and uh, the people that you may hurt in doing what you're doing, not taking care of yourself, not knowing if you're healthy enough, if you're creating, you know, this perfect storm in your body to take your life one day. Um, So uh, within the bodybuilding world, um, it's really hard to get someone to, you know, I'm not going to say it's hard to get someone. I'll talk about myself. It was hard to get me to get in, you know, get some lab work done, get, get to know if there's something actually wrong with me. You, don't want to think there's something wrong with you. You just want to battle through um, your your nicks and your bruises, you know, and scrapes. You just want to battle through them and get on the other side and, you know, keep competing. But um, it, it, this mentality could be detrimental to your life. Um, so be aware of it, guys. Uh, be smarter, like I said, than what you decide to uh, use to make yourself better or stronger you know the point i'm trying to make is that every time we hear about a bodybuilder dying we always think steroids or drug enhancement sometimes it's using stuff that's good for us minerals that included that are good for us that we abuse that we and use the wrong way that we can take that can actually take our life as well so just because you hear a bodybuilder dies don't always mean He's a drug abuser or a steroid abuser or drug enhancement abuser. We try to make the right decisions all the time. Sometimes, you know, we don't make the right decisions when we're trying to win, win, win. I also want to send out my condolences on the behalf of myself and Generation Iron to all the families, to all the loved ones they lost. All the bodybuilders is a sadder world without you, sadder stage without you being on it, competing, pushing yourself, and pushing the competitors around you, and motivating the masses. 
God bless. Love you all. This is the Hardcore Truth with Johnny O. Jackson. Thank you for stepping in this week. I hope you enjoyed my little episode here. Um, come back next week, and uh, it'll be a new topic. If it want, if you want it to be what you want to hear, please comment below. Also, follow, share. We'll see you next week.